So we've got our carburetor and all kinds of brand new polyurethane vacuum lines. So today we're going to put this carburetor on the Pinto. That way the Pinto is running and driving, even as rough as it is on the outside. It's running and driving and good on the inside. So stay tuned. That's what we're working on today. So a little bit of a change today. Today we're going to go ahead and swap out that carb on, um, that we have issues with. Gas is getting to the carburetor. It's not squirting through. I've rebuilt it. It's got a bunch of garbage in it. I really don't feel like messing with it anymore. I was able to find a carburetor online at uh, Rock Auto, believe it or not. came out of Canada, um, probably because 2.3s are uh, real popular over in England, up in Canada. So. Today, that's what we're going to do is we're going to replace this carburetor and get this thing done and ready to roll. I've also got all new vacuum lines to replace all the vacuum lines. I uh, went out and bought the, the book, the repair manual, the actual one from Ford so that I can know where these route because there are vacuum tubes everywhere and they're hard as rock. So it's time to replace them. So that's what we're doing today. So I'll get you set up on a better view so that you can watch um, as I pull this thing apart and you can kind of see how everything goes. Okay, let's get to it. So she sits on an adapter plate that adapts it to the manifold. So the easiest way to do it, because these other bolts are buried underneath here, is to go ahead and pull the adapter plate bolts out there on the outside and makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to go after those after I unhook the gas line and all these other little vacuum lines. Some of the uh, items that are on the carburetor you are going to have to put on the new one and I'll show you as we get there what's got to go where. This time we'll remember to tighten this one up. This is a nice gas line too. We'll replace that too. So, As you can see it's nice and tight. This one goes around to the bottom. I'll try to keep the vacuum lines everywhere near where they are. And that way we know when we put it back together what goes where. I do have a, man or a manual that I did buy mainly because of these vacuum lines. If you do not get these right, this thing will run like garbage. Let's see, i got to pop that linkage off there. Too short.
Okay, so we've got our old carburetor out. Didn't take long. It'd be nice if you could use a ratchet on it, but evidently you can't. And here's our new one. New gasket and everything. She comes with all kinds of instructions and everything on what you need to take off and, and move over. All that kind of fun stuff. First, let's unwrap this carburetor. Razor knife makes quick work of it. And they do charge a cord charge, so you do got to get this thing back to them. shrink wrap it just to mess with yet. New carburetor, new air cleaner gasket, and of course our new base gasket. And of course it's off just a pinch. It's never nothing can ever be right on the money. That one goes back there. As I say, they give you the layout for everything. Pretty basic. The easiest way is just put them side by side. Look what you got to take off one for the other. So there we are side by side. First thing we have to do is separate the carburetor from the base plate that it's got here. You'll notice that it has a base plate. You do need to remove these, these bolts so we can get to this base plate. So I'll grab a wrench. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is remove this this base plate from the carb. Or 716. The easiest way to do this is start at the bottom, work your way up. to do this is pay attention to everything as you go so first things first we're going to change this gasket it came with a new one that I set down somewhere on this table I know that the linkage is to the back. Voila. Just replace those bolts first. I said I'm going to do this in steps. You don't want to start ripping stuff apart and then wonder where you're at. That's never any good. sure we've got it the right way before we go any further. I hate to put this all together and find out that uh, you did it wrong. There's some writing on there. Didn't make it out though. 
way to know for sure is put the two side by side. This one says top front. So this is definitely the front of the carburetor this away. She sits like that. We want that rim that away. Yes, we'll do it twice. It's okay as long as you get it right. In the end, that's all that matters. And these little holly carbs are pretty much a one-size-fits-all type of carburetor, so there are going to be some differences. Like, for example, on the inlet, this one's got a filter here as opposed to this one just having an inlet. I also just noticed that the inlet is bent. And these get snug down. And you'll notice that someone converted the choke from the spade on the side to this wire to plug into a spade. So this is evidently a remanufactured carburetor of some kind. Uh, everything else pretty much looks the same. You got your vacuum here. You've got an idle adjustment here, which the old school doesn't have. Uh, your accelerator pumps in the right place. Um, oh yeah, there is the inlet. Look at that. So we want to pull that off. I don't think that wrench is big enough. But we'll check. No, it's not. Okay, let me go grab a wrench for that. Not sure, bring them all. Let me pull that filter off. <laughs> Normally I would replace the filter, but this one's already been replaced. I say he did some work to it before he uh, sold it to me. If he just decided to go a different direction. Like I say, we don't have to change that at all. Uh, flipping around this side, everything's here. Like I say this one's got an, an adjustment screw on it, whereas this one doesn't. Uh, so that's kind of a nice ad. I don't know how well you can get to it when it's in the car, but it's a nice ad. The other thing we're going to have to pull off is the idle adjustment. that there is a spring on this one so that one didn't have a spring like that back that off and I put in a couple of washers to take up the space those come out and to put the spring back All right, this plug has definitely got some issues. So we are going to have to do something about this. Voila. Make sure all that's on there. Sure is. And voila, one leather pack. Makes that easy. Okay, back on the carburetor. We got our new weather pack installed. It appeared that only one of them's hooked up, so the other one's dead ended. This is, I believe, AC, but I'm not I'm not sure, so I'm not gonna say yes or no. Like I said, go to your book and that'll tell you everything you need to know. 
Uh, looks like I do need to transfer this clip over. It's clearly belong to something. Maybe, maybe not, but we're going to transfer it over anyway just to be safe. And as you do something, put it back. You know, this is a core. I'm sure that if something is missing, they're going to charge me something for it. I think they used these little hollies in a lot of stuff in the 80s. Well, let's see. Out of there. Doesn't look like we have anything else we need to transfer over, but let's check our instructions to be sure. Well, yeah. Oh, I'm down here. Let me hook that PC up. If you hadn't watched the earlier video with the other carburetor, she was getting fuel just fine, just not bringing up any in the squirter. And that was what the guy I bought it from had said. He goes, like, he, the pump wasn't working worth a darn. Okay, and last one, we just need to hook up the throttle cable and then start playing with vacuum lines.